the 28th Nigerian Economic Summit uh, titles 2023 and beyond priorities for shared prosperity is underway in Abuja. The summit is an annual event where the public and private sector stakeholders deliberate on developmental issues. While speaking at the event, the Nigerian Finance Minister Zina Bame said Nigeria is making efforts to diversify its revenue sources and depend less on oil. The Vice President Yemi Oshibajo commented on the country's debt to GDP ratios. Emphasis on oil revenues. As we implement the National Development Plan, the financing from government will continue to rely going forward heavily on domestic resource mobilization from the non-oil sector through the results of the implementation of the Strategic Revenue Growth Initiative of the Ministry of Finance, Budget and National Planning, as well as the, finance, the annual finance acts. This process will improve and further diversify government revenues and entrench fiscal prudence and enhance value for money. This year's summit, titled 2023 and beyond priorities for shared prosperity, this theme was carefully chosen to provide direction for stakeholders to examine the progress that we have made so far during this administration in terms of achievements in policy implementation of programs and projects encapsulated in the National Development Plan for 2021 to 2025. Over the next two days, we will have an opportunity to examine how far we have gone in terms of implementation of the strategies. We have also uh, an opportunity to look at how far we have gone in terms of achieving sustainable economic growth and development, as well as achieving the set priorities for our shared prosperity beyond 2023. The economy continues to grow with GDP growth at 3.54%, as we've heard in the second quarter of this year. non all revenues are also up and they continue to improve, especially since some of the initiatives in the Finance Act. For instance, the increase in VAT from 5% to 7.5% led to an increase in revenues by as much as 69% above the target for 2021. While also in the same period, corporate income tax increased by 15.5% above target. Customs duties also went up by 10% above target. And independent revenues of our government were up by 17.8%. So there's, you know, a fair amount of good news. But it is still our revenue challenges that heighten the notion that we have a major debt problem, which is really uh, the case. Now, which is really not the case, beg your pardon, given the fact that our debt to GDP ratio is just 23%. But it's also true that what matters right now and what matters and what will matter is our debt service to revenue ratio, which is undoubtedly high. But I think that it is in increasing revenues that should most, that must engage our attention. And that's really what we must focus on. We've already improvements as I've mentioned in non-oil revenues, but our focus must now be on productivity or encouraging value addition. Productivity and value addition means creation of traceable value, tradable value. It means jobs and opportunities, and it means more tax revenue. And uh, joining me now for more on the Economic Summit is Professor of Economics at the University of Nigeria, Unsuka, Professor Sita Ogu. Prof, it's good to see you. Good afternoon. Yeah, good to see you again. Thank, thank, thank you. Thank, thank you so much. It's good to make the time this afternoon. Uh, give me the major highlights of this uh, uh, summit for you. For the first day, we we'll listen to the Mr. Vice President, the Honorable Minister of uh, Finance, and a couple of other big names such as uh, today Peter Seiden. What are you, what are your thoughts uh, that you harvested so far uh, from the academia point of view? Well, I, I, I think it's good that uh, we acknowledge where the difficulties are and uh, the prospects that are being made, especially in the revenue and expenditure side. We all agree that there is uh, very little fiscal space and that uh, borrowing will not do. I think one of the things perhaps we didn't get a chance to discuss 
is that it's not simply about raising revenue, it's also the efficiency of the use of that revenue. And how you begin to reduce expenditure in order for that revenue to be directed to the productive sector. We, 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 we need to dig deeper into that uh, because the budgeting system in this country needs a complete overhaul. So uh, my take is that the team is extremely well uh, thought out uh, in the sense that we have seen growth in the past, uh, but that growth was not shared. And as a member of that panel, I expressed myself as to why that was the case. Uh, well, what are your thoughts, Professor, about the problem of what you called uh, 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 inequality in Nigeria? That's the basic thing about not shared prosperity. Uh, again, what prosperity has the country has had that is not shared, that has brought the country to where it is today? No, the, 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 the system in itself, by design, uh, creates inequality, especially in a rentier economy where oil is the driver, oil revenue. But it is then the duty of government to moderate this. Because the point I was making, because when emphasis was being placed on taxing, I said you cannot express responsible citizenship from people who do not actually believe that they are citizens because they feel excluded. That the system in itself, by definition, uh, is taking care of a few and not the majority. And we all agree on this, that perhaps 2 3% of Nigerians uh, can afford to even buy a dollar at 1,000, can afford to buy a flight ticket at any price, can afford to train their children abroad. So if you want to discuss inequality, which is really a very serious matter because it's also related to issues of crime and uh, social discontent. Um, you, you, you have to look at issues of education, public education in particular, public health, so that you begin to provide equalizing factors and platforms upon which citizenship can be built, upon which parents today can say, I may not be sharing in the prosperity of today. I'm willing to share in the burden because my children will share in the prosperity of tomorrow. Uh, so um, in, in what ways do you think we can therefore redress this issue to have an inclusive growth? You talk about budgeting earlier. Well, first of which, all, you need you to uh, first accept that we... Uh, did I hear you right? Yes, please go ahead. Please go ahead, Professor. I, I was referring to the budgeting issue you okay. mentioned earlier as one of the points. Oh, yes. Um, no, uh, my point is if, if you want growth to be inclusive, one is we must take the issue of diversification seriously, and I want to be specific. You know, we keep saying that we have diversified. You can't be diversified if your manufacturing sector is still contributing less than 20% to the gross domestic product. No country, none, has ever lifted millions out of poverty without a robust manufacturing sector, contributing close to 30 to 40% to GDP. We are still playing around this matter. And let me be very clear, and I said it uh, today, that it is the duty of state because while the private sector is driver, the state must create the engine that they will drive. So the state must direct, must use resources, must coordinate institutions to begin to address the challenges the manufacturing sector face in order for them to begin to produce the needed employment. It is in the manufacturing sector that you can employ both the educated and non-educated. It is in the manufacturing sector that you see the dynamics of technology use and innovation. And all of these things are what goes to grow the pie that you are going to be dividing. So a lot of our poor people are in the informal sector, and we seem to be celebrating the informal sector. The informal sector needs to be formalized in some form, and it is through these small and medium uh, enterprises that are so uh, uh, enabled by development institutions, by the state that can play that role. Second is the issue of education. People must build skills that are needed in the market for them to participate in the prosperity. 
So if we have abandoned private schools, if universities can go on strike for seven months and nobody cares, if we are not treating universities as centers of solution and equipping them to address these issues, then the issue of shared prosperity will become a mirage. Uh, just a quick one. Can you give me a, a, a minute uh, less than that on the resigning of the Naira? Oh, well, I, uh, yeah, we didn't get to that. But, you, you know, there's a lot of free money in the system, and I think it's an important point. Uh, what I mean by free money is that money that is not backed up by production or productivity. So the design of the Naira in itself might be partly a solution to how we deal with uh, the issue of free money. Because a lot of people have access to resources for which they did not work for. Uh, and for which pro no, no productivity uh, has arisen from the expenditure of that money. So the redesigning, I think the issue uh, people might have is on the timing and on the duration. Otherwise, I don't think it's actually a bad policy. All right, well, thank you so much for your time today. Professor uh, Osita Ogu, a professor of economics at the, professor at the University uh, uh, of Nigeria in Usuka. Thank you so much for your time. Thank you.